Hey, Les from Northwoods again. We're going to be talking about how to work with spalted wood. I've been getting a lot of questions on how in the world do I turn this uh, if it's soft. So there's several things that I've done that have really helped in the process uh, and I'm here to share those with you today. So first of all, what I've done is I've, as I've isolated a piece of spalted wood. This is uh, big leaf maple, again, what we predominantly use. It's got some curl figure in it, you can see here. It's also, with the, the lighter part, you can see the spalting is pretty much about halfway up the piece on this side, uh, but it's pretty well invasive on this back side. Uh, this is all punky wood in here as well as here. So about about a third to about a third to half of the wood is actually very well spalted. So what I like to do is I make sure that both ends have been squared off. I don't have any saw marks on here. Uh, it's one straight through true cut so I can get those nice and square. And um, after that what I do is I, I'm just using some some uh, plain maple blocks that are these have been these have been air dried for about two years what i would truly like to do is to have these a little bit concave which gives a little better gluing surface but uh, because of uh, the nature of this spalted wood i'm not able to do it there and i'm not able to do it on these as well um, so turning between centers uh, it shouldn't be a problem actually so what I'm using is I'll take the activator which helps in the adhesion of the CA glue um, I like to put it on the on the drier part first or the, the harder surface we'll go ahead and put a few rounds of the uh, thick CA glue I don't even remember what the brand name of is of this CA glue but all of them I think of are pretty comparable I suppose. Um, I like to put pretty good amount here just because I don't want it to come flying out the lathe because uh, we all know that can leave a mark and uh, so get a good good covering there also do the other end aligned don't have to be perfect, but that's that. And I'm going to hold that for oh, maybe about five or ten seconds. Once I have those affixed, I'm going to get a straight edge. I like to do the, I like to find my center, uh, just because it's it's a little easier. I don't have to worry about it flopping around on the lathe too much. We'll find the center of this block, approximate center of the of the uh, material itself. Just because this material is is a lot thinner than probably uh, if you're using a solid two inch, three inch piece of wood, it's not going to be a, a big deal about splitting out. But I'm always concerned, especially with the life center, that too much pressure on here is going to split this this uh, one inch block so I'll just give it a an eight inch, eighth inch hole just enough for the point of the life center and the tailstock to to go in there and rest well. The glue block on the end supports the tailstock and the life center so that it doesn't drive itself into this punky wood. Without these uh, you're going to lose a tremendous amount of material uh, in in size wise of the piece you're going to make because that will create a hole on the end.
So now that we have the the basic shape that I like to see here, uh, there's a lot more I could do to this, but I'm going to stop at this point because I'm getting some tear out, which uh, with punky wood you're going to have that. So now what we're going to do is start coating it with the shellac and thinner, and what we're going to try to do is fortify, especially the lighter parts, which are softer. You can probably tell which with most softwood it's already in this area right here it's actually starting to you can see this starting to move a little bit and that's just kind of the nature of punky wood so anyway let's start coating it see it really starting to bring out those natural colors in there this shellac and thinner could tend to make the the wood turn a little bit a little bit darker it's more of an amber color which is kind of the color of the shellac actually see that curly figure coming through what we'll do is we'll put this on here we'll let it let it dry well and then we'll maybe We'll come back and, and sand it a little bit more. Um, and then if it's still a little bit soft, we'll come back and do it again. Do that before we transition to the next step, which would be hollowing out the uh, inside. Take your time with this part, because this is kind of the critical, critical piece. Just watch the Watch the shellac and see that it's soaking in, and when it stops soaking in, then you can stop coating it. You can see right here, this wood is actually pretty solid, the darker wood. You can see where it just kind of sits on top of the wood and doesn't soak in very well, but then other parts the lighter parts where it just soaks in like a sponge. It's getting pretty close. There's still some spaces, there's still some places that are pretty uh, Still aren't quite soaked up well enough. It's starting to get pretty close. Sometimes you're going to have some tear out that you really can't can't get out. It's just is what it is. Uh, it's the nature of the nature of the wood. Okay, I will stop right there and come back once it dries. So what we've done here is. Uh, coated it with shellac. I waited till it dried really well and I sanded this. Uh, started with 100 grit sandpaper and got it fairly smooth as you can see. And I'm going to hit it just a little bit more and then I'm going to turn it around and, and cut a tenon on this end so that I can chuck it up into the chuck. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drill with a Forstner bit down in through the top of the vase. As you could see when it was turning, it was actually moving a little bit, a little bit of wobble. So uh, with that really punky wood, really soft wood, we want to take as many precautions and make it as easy to get a hole on the inside as we possibly can. So we're going to drill that hole. I've got a two inch Forstner bit and uh, I won't be able to go all the way down to the bottom, but that's really not my not my choice. I'm I'm leaving it probably about three inches from the bottom of the base, which gives a little bit more support to the bottom of the
So now that we've got that hole clearing out most of the material inside the vase, I'm going to start uh, working this, this top and getting it uh, a little thinner right in here as well as uh, try to thin out the rest of it going down. I'm not going to make the walls very thin. Probably going to leave them maybe a half an inch thick uh, because I don't want it to uh, explode on me for one and uh, because of the soft material uh, it's it is likely it, it could do that and then what we'll do we're going to lacquer it and then I'm going to part it off and then we're done As you can see, we finished cleaning out the inside, and now I've put a, a lacquer finish over the top of the shellac and thinner, which makes an excellent base for uh, for a sanding sealer. And uh, we're going to part off the end of this, and then this segment will be complete. So, good luck with your endeavors, and go turn.